for a little bit of background, I decided to go ahead and replace my first generation iMac 5K with the new Mac Mini 2018, uh, the new LG Ultrawide 5K 2K, and uh, an eGPU because I knew that the Mac Mini 2018 was not going to have a very good eGPU, or I'm sorry, uh, a GPU. I didn't know much about eGPUs other than they were kind of new with at the end of uh, the previous Mac OS and they they were going to be supported in Mojave. So uh, I just went up to open up uh, Amazon and uh, somebody had mentioned that the uh, I'd read on a board that the you know for the price of the Black Magic eGPUs you can get a Vega 64 in an eGPU. So I went to Amazon and just uh, search there for the Vega 64 with and uh, with my intention of getting a, a Vega 64 and an eGPU and what came up was the package here with the Asus R Radeon Vega 64 and the e uh, an eGPU Razer Core X so both those packages together for $950 so that seemed like a pretty good deal and what I was looking for and everybody was talking about and um, a little bit more than the Blackmagic eGPU but less than the eGPU Pro so I was like okay the Razer Core X had an impeccable build but it was incredibly loud and uh, it was a it was very big uh, as in a space hog it had one fan, it had fans on one side that blew all the time on the power supply and on the other side a vent for whenever the fans needed to blow on the card. Um, it never blew that much except whenever the whenever I was playing the card on a video game or something like that. So the way that I was connected, the, the configuration I was running, I hadn't bought the 2018 Mac Mini yet because it wasn't out. So I connected it to my 2016 MacBook Pro and uh, it was connected with the Thunderbolt 3 to the eGPU and then uh, DVI or the display port to the LG Ultrawide and that gave me um, I wasn't familiar that much with it but the the resolution that looked the best on that was this 3440 by 1440 but it did look slightly pixelated which kind of disappointed me because I thought with a you know, a thousand dollar setup for the eGPU and the card that I should get like a sharp looking setup. And I wasn't. Uh, I mean, it was just slightly pixelated. So it was nice. Uh, if you ran it in its old, uh, default mode close to the 2560 by 1080, it looked okay, but everything was gigantic. Uh, you know, large icons and large windows. And if you open up the basic programs, they were like these huge programs. So it just, none of it was looking right. So then I connected the MacBook to the LG Ultrawide and I got this uh, Retina, basically this Retina resolution, the 6720 by 2834 with these scaling options that could, you know, this UI looks like the 3360 by 1417, but in the background is really running double that. But therein lies why I think one of the reasons why this Blackmagic eGPU or the Pro is worth the extra money. Because if you have a Thunderbolt display, you can get that Retina resolution because it has a Thunderbolt out back to the, or I guess it doesn't matter if it's out or in, but it has a Thunderbolt connection back out to the monitor. So you can use your Thunderbolt connection from the Mac Mini or your Mac iMac Pro or your MacBook Pro, whatever, or your MacBook Air to the Blackmagic eGPU and then connect the Thunderbolt from the eGPU back to the display and then get a retina resolution. And it seems like the reviewers are glossing over that, that you can get these retina resolutions, but it takes that sort of, you need that Thunderbolt connection to do that. Instead, they're just running it in the display port and running at these horrid resolutions or the maximum resolution. Uh, this 5,000 by 2,000 something, and it's it's terrible. Some benchmarks here: that Razer Core X with the Vega 60, Asus Ve Vega 64. This is going from the MacBook Pro to the monitor, and then using the uh, Vegas or the eGPU on the side. Uh, it's about 150,227 here on the Mac uh, the Geekbench score, 
And then if I went from the MacBook to the eGPU to the Display Port, that uh, increased it by about eleven thousand to one hundred sixty-one thousand nine hundred eighty-nine score here on the Geekbench. So a pretty big increase. Well, and that makes sense because you're not using a Thunderbolt cable to go to the eGPU and then back again. But in the end, uh, that was pretty much it. Was all pretty much a, a, an experiment because. I ended up having to return the eGPU and the card because it turns out that the Asus Vega 64 is not one of the supported cards that Apple recommends. I don't know if these these are recommended cards or supported cards, but Asus is not one of them. And that's what I had to learn, that these there are differences. Even though people said Vega 64, they didn't say Sapphire Vega 64 or XFS uh, XFX Vega 64 and I chose the Asus Vega 64 which is not on here so I didn't understand the, the the difference in those kinds of cards nonetheless one time whenever I was running those tests on the uh, the heaven uh, test uh, GPU test the card basically popped and that was the end of that thank goodness for Amazon's return policies I just went ahead and returned the card and the eGPU and um, decided that I was going to go ahead and get the Ma Black Magic eGPU because I figured that since it was sold by Apple, it was I wasn't going to have any more issues with it. Finally, here's the both of the units. As the market, marketing material says, the main difference, the only difference other than the Black Magic design label, is that the eGPU Pro has the DVI I the display port uh, additional adapter uh display port 1.4 adapter out so this is the eGPU pro it's very nice and the regular the first eGPU and other than that they're both exactly the same and almost way the same And goes on to the Mac Mini or the MacBook Pro there that you saw in the background, and connected up to the LG Ultra Wide, the nice um, space gray trackpad and keyboard. Now I'm going to show Unity Heaven test running the Blackmagic Design eGPU Pro. Nothing fancy, just showing uh, it, how it runs through this. It runs at about 30 to 40 frames a second. Uh, nothing super fancy. Um, when I ran the Razer Core X through DVI using the Vega 64, this sometimes got up to 90 to 100 frames per second. Uh, I'm not a gamer, so I wasn't looking for anything you know super sweet or 60 frames per second. Now that would have been nice, but and kind of expected for $1,200, but nonetheless, um, it is what it is. It is nice, but um, that's about it. I, I don't know how this video is going to um, encode and how it's going to look uh, once the, the final product is on the internet, but it's, you know, I'm not, I, like I said, I'm not a big gamer. And I've already played this before uh, a little bit with the, uh, it's probably not a super taxing game, but on the, uh, the Alien Isolation, uh, using the Mac version, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, I, I can't play it too long, because I get sick on this monitor. I, like I said, I don't play that much, so, uh, but it was, it was pretty fun. And it looks, it really does look beautiful. I'm going to do another uh, demonstration, or the I'll show the Blackmagic Design eGPU here in a minute. But I wanted to show again how nice it is with the Thunderbolt display to the Thunderbolt monitor, and that's right there because of the the scaling. And as you can see, you, because of the, you're allowed the, the scaling, and you can get that Retina uh, resolution, and you can run it like in, like as you can see here the double the resolution and get that really nice sharpness. 
But here I'll show I'll switch it now. This is over the display port. And with the display port, all I can get is this 1340 by 1440. And this is like I mean you can get more, but it's pixelated. And uh, as a friend said to me, he's like, it, it, it's it's okay, and you can use it, but what I see is money lost. It's it's like you know it, you what you could have. And that's what I don't get is why why use the display port. Okay, now just for just kind of see how this how much of a big difference that the eGPU can make. Here I'm going to show how running the Mac Mini not using any eGPU but using its own graphics. And there's a lot of these examples over the internet, but just for completeness of this video, I'm going to go ahead and put it in here. And as you can see, you get about four or five frames per second. Um, and so here it goes through. Yeah, it's running about four or five frames per second. Now this is running from the Mac Mini to the Thunderbolt display over Thunderbolt. To get this to work on a Mac Mini 2018, you have to set it to, well, at least for the uh, LG Ultrawide, you have to set the display port to 1.2. Okay, so it's, it's incredibly bad. It's okay for normal use, uh, but uh, when sliding from uh, desktop to uh, yeah, desktop to desktop, uh, going into launch, launching the desktop, or, well, of course, they're playing a game or anything like that. Yeah, it gets uh, pretty choppy. And now here I'll show uh, using the Mac Mini to the Thunderbolt display but then also on the other bus the Mac Mini to the eGPU and telling it the game to prefer using the eGPU and see if that will uh, speed up the frames per second but of course you've got the Mac Mini going to the eGPU back from the eGPU to the Mac Mini then to the display um, running all those electrons back and forth uh, over that you know 40 megabit cable etc a little faster. Uh, it looks like you double the frame rate, but when your frame rate was at four frames per second and now you're at eight, it is doubling the frame rate. This is not using though the eGPU Pro. This is just using right now. I still have connected the um, I have connected the 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 original eGPU, the Blackmagic eGPU. Still, yeah, pretty unusable. So the way to go, as you, you can probably see here, the way to go is from the Mac Mini to the eGPU, then from the eGPU's second Thunderbolt to the Thunderbolt monitor. And that'll be the next test. And now this is using the original Blackmagic eGPU. Uh, and there's tons of um, videos out on the internet using the original one and unfortunately they're all you know uh, knocking it but what they don't kind of you know they don't show this like oh, yeah for video games and, the, and these demonstrations it isn't the best but they're not talking about how quiet I mean well they say like you know that you know if you want the quietness but it is makes a big difference you can see there it's about yeah 17 20 frames per second um, but just the basic overall resolution, which you can get that retina resolution because it's a Thunderbolt. It's going from Thunderbolt, the Mac Mini Thunderbolt, to the eGPU Thunderbolt, then from the eGPU Thunderbolt back to the Thunderbolt monitor. And you can get a retina resolution. Not that 1340 by 1440 re resolution that you would have to use over DVI DisplayPort with any other eGPU. And if, if that's fine with you or anybody else, that's fine. I mean, that's that's just how it is. But to me, that's that's like that's when I looked at it and I said, well, that's just money lost. Lastly, just to get an idea here of some of the um, benchmarks, the two eGPUs 
and the eGPU Pro, and just for giggles, the original Razer Core X with the Asus Vega 64. The two eGPU Blackmagic eGPU benchmarks are on the Mac Mini, and the Vega 64 is on the MacBook 2016. As we can see, uh, the AMD Radeon Pro 580 gave a score about, uh, or, which is in the original Blackmagic eGPU, gave a score about 116. 007. Of course, that changes every time, but let's just say 116,000 eGPU Pro with the AMD Radeon RX Vega 56 gave 175, 472,000, which beats the the Razer Core X with the Asus Vega 64, which had a score of about 162,000. So that kind of surprised me, because they, even at its best score, which was going from the MacBook Thunderbolt to the e, uh, eGPU out through DVI, the display port. I didn't think that it would it beat the Vega 64, but it was. And that might be because uh, it was, you know, like I said, on that original list, it was an unsupported card. Maybe, you know, maybe that's why. I don't know. If you know, um, if you know, or if you have any ideas, if I've been wrong about something, I don't know. Like I said, I, I didn't know much about this at the beginning. I'm still learning a lot about it. But uh, if you have any comments or anything like that, please let me know. Or corrections. You know, I'm, I still want to learn and let me know. If you made it this far and you watched this whole thing, thanks a lot. All right. Bye.